Are you ready, kids? I can't hear you. This episode of Brains on Games is all about a SpongeBob SquarePants game. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald, and this episode, well, it was like Christmas at my house recently when I received a game from the op, a game called Plankton Rising. Now, Plankton Rising is a game that you can play solo or with up to four players. So there's one to four players. Kids age eight and up can play this game. And you can play a game in about 45 minutes to an hour. Boy, I was excited to receive this game. My kids love SpongeBob, and I came to love them as well. Okay, Plankton Rising is part of a series of games. You might have seen Thanos Rising or Batman Who Laughs Rising, but SpongeBob was the, the one that I really, really wanted to try because it's about SpongeBob, where you're, tr you're trying to complete orders at the Krusty Krab as quickly as possible before Plankton steals the Krabby Patty recipe. I mean, look at this figure of Plankton. It is hilarious. I opened the box and, I, I mean, it brought a smile to my face immediately. Well, you can see I'm beaming. What you're doing in this game is you're here at the Krusty Krab. Each of the players is going to play as one of the characters from SpongeBob SquarePants. So you can play as SpongeBob. You can play as Patrick Starr or Squidward Tentacles or Mr. Krabs. So you would choose this card to represent your team, your character. And he's got a little symbol at the top, that little arm with the muscle. That's the symbol for effort in this game. The four different suits or, or abilities or team logos, you've got effort, teamwork, and friendship, and fun. <laughs> great ideas, great themes or abilities for kids. And it fits very well with the SpongeBob theme. Like I said, you choose your character and then you choose your character's house. Here you can see SpongeBob's house. He does live in a pineapple under the sea. This tells you which dice you'll be able to roll on your turn. There are several dice of different colors with various symbols on the sides. And if you roll a certain number of a particular symbol, your house has a special ability that you can take advantage of. And we'll talk about what those are. On your turn, you'll take your team symbol and you'll put it here in the Krusty Krab. Maybe I'll be in the dining room this time. That just tells which of the cards along the side. There's always going to be eight cards out. Four in the dining room and four in the kitchen. If I put my token here, I can only interact with the ones that are in the dining room on this turn. The next thing that you do is Plankton has to work on his evil plan. And you draw a card from the Plankton deck, which tells you where Plankton's going to go and what ingredient he's going to try and steal that turn. This card says he would go to the Chum Bucket, and that is Plankton's restaurant. That's what the figure is standing on, which means that he's not going to interact with any of the cards on the board on that turn. However, he will be stealing an ingredient here. You would put a little orange theft token on the cheese and lettuce here. Now, you can see that there's five squares on each of these ingredients. So if he manages to fill those up, you flip it over and he's stolen that one. And that means next time he goes to that location, he gets to do some evil thing instead of just trying to steal the ingredient. If he steals all of the ingredients, it's game over. He's won. He's stolen the Krabby Patty recipe and you can't continue. The other way that you end the game is if the players complete a certain number of orders in the restaurant. That's one way that you can customize the difficulty level on this game. You can decide to shoot for seven recipes as sort of a basic game. You can remove the villains. I'm going to talk about the villains in a moment. You can remove the villains from the deck just to make it easier for the younger kids. Or you can increase the number of orders that you have to complete. Okay, so this time I drew a card that put Plankton outside of the restaurant at the Chum Bucket. But what would have happened if he wound up in the kitchen or if he wound up here in the dining room? If I had drawn a card that put him in the kitchen, there aren't any villains here for him to activate. But he does kind of get in the way of what your friends might want to do. And he'll put these time tokens on the friends that are in the kitchen. 
And that means that they're only going to be available for a limited amount of time. If he had wound up down here, same thing would happen. If he was in the dining room, you would get a time token here on Gary and one on Sandy. In addition, down here in the dining room, you've got two villains and Plankton will activate the villain's abilities. Down here, you've got Man Ray, and Man Ray is the villain, I think, from the Merman and Barnacle Boy show. And his ability is that if Plankton is present in the same room as Man Ray, he adds one theft token to any ingredient. That's going to make Plankton's plans go a little bit faster. If he's in the same room as Doodle Bob, then the player who's in that room can't assign dice to friends. Some of the friends in the game have abilities that require the symbols on a die to be activated, and Doodle Bob will prevent that from happening. The villains then add an extra wrinkle to your plans and further Plankton's goals of stealing the recipe for Krabby Patties. Okay, so I drew Plankton's card. He's not going to interact with anybody. He's just trying to steal that ingredient. Now I can do something with these cards down here. In this case, I have two friends I might be able to recruit for my team. And there are two enemies that I might want to try and defeat so that Plankton can't use them to further his plot. So remember, SpongeBob's house said that I should roll two red dice and one yellow. I've rolled those. I've got the effort symbol, the fun symbol, and the friendship symbol. Now, each of the dice has a face where you can get two symbols instead of one. There's a number two beside it. Uh, it would have been nice if I had rolled one of those because when you look down here, you can see that Sandy, for example, needs two symbols of each of the fun and the friendship in order to recruit her to my team. I can't defeat any of these villains either. So what am I going to use these symbols for? Well, if I spend one of those effort symbols, I can use the ability on SpongeBob's house, which would allow me to take a time token, one of these little things, off of one of the characters in the game. Plankton hasn't done anything yet, but that's one of the things that he does. You'll put these little time things because these characters are only going to be available around in the restaurant for a certain amount of time. And one of the things Plankton can do is add these tokens to the characters so that they'll be discarded and you'll have to draw them again. It, so eventually I might be helping one of my friends by using SpongeBob's ability to take a time token off. I might be able to add a token to one of the villains in order to defeat them and get them out of the way so that Plankton can't use them. Or if I were lucky enough, I might have the symbols to complete an order. Remember, I could win the game by completing seven of these orders as long as I do it before Plankton steals the recipe for Krabby Patties. Now the little characters have some special abilities as well that might activate when you assign a symbol to them or if you have a certain number of friends. For example, SpongeBob gets to roll an extra die if he has another friend with the Effort Team logo on them. So that would be a good reason for me to try and get Gary to be my friend so he'll be on my team. Once I've spent my dice or discarded them or tried to do my actions, I put those aside and then the next player plays and it proceeds in that manner. If I were lucky enough to roll symbols that would allow me to put one of these time tokens on a villain, I'm working towards getting those villains out of the restaurant, I would be able to pick up one of these spatula tokens. The spatula tokens have abilities on the other side that you can use at any time. You can trade them from player to player there's a bit of player interaction in that way. And you discard them to give yourself some special ability. In this case, I could remove a time token from two friends. You might also be able to roll an extra die. So you're choosing when to use those. You're looking at the layout of the cards on the board and where Plankton is, what tokens are on the cards in the restaurant and on the ingredients here. 
and you, you have to budget those symbols. You're planning ahead then, and there's a lot of information that you're keeping track of. That's working memory like we've talked about before, and those executive functions of working towards a future goal. Another thing that's, I think, interesting about this game, well, of course, you're using the flexible problem solving and fluid reasoning skills. Usually the games that involve executive functions involve those fluid reasoning skills as well. But this is a cooperative game. I don't think I've talked about a cooperative game on the show before. And it's cooperative, meaning that you're all working together. So there's that social aspect of working together to defeat the game or or Plankton in this case, you're not working against the other players. You're helping each other. And in some families, these kinds of games are really important. If kids get really frustrated with their siblings, for example, when they're losing a game. Now, you might all be frustrated together as a team. That can be an issue. Another thing that comes up in these cooperative games is you can have a situation where one player is the leader. If that role shifts around the table a little bit that's not a bad thing but if one player kind of takes on the role of the alpha player and tells everybody else what to do that can be an issue that you might need to work through so there are some social skills that you need to develop in order to be successful i think at these kinds of games spongebob is all about friendship of course but plankton rising is not a game that has a mechanic to prevent one player from taking over some other games like Magic Maze is a cooperative game, but the players aren't allowed to talk to each other, which makes it really hard for one player to dominate all of the rest. So you're, you might be learning some leadership skills, but also learning when to step back. I mean, the goal of the game, of course, you want to win the game, but you want all the players to have fun too. Hopefully, you and the kids will be able to sort that out. This is a game that really felt nostalgic for me just because my kids really love Spongebob and I came to love them as well. Both of my boys, when they saw it, I mean, they're teenagers now, but they were very excited, especially when I pulled out this little plankton figure. And it, it's pretty big and heavy, honestly, this thing. It's really well done. A fun theme, a fun game, a cooperative game where you're using those leadership skills along with executive functions and flexible problem solving or fluid reasoning and that's plankton rising in a nutshell if you have questions for me or suggestions for me you can always find me at brian at brainsongames.ca brainsongames.ca is the website that's where past episodes are posted and future episodes will go up there too brains on games is the twitter handle and the facebook page and the instagram feed and if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to be notified of future ones, you can always head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time.